Hi everyone, Dan Groninger here for GE Inspection Technologies with another in our short uh, video series on uh, various NDT techniques. Today we're going to take a look at using our DMS Go uh, advanced thickness gauge in dual multi-mode to take measurements uh, through coatings like paint, say you have a pipe with a uh, thick layer of paint on the outside, you'd like to be able to take a thickness measurement, you don't want to have to grind the paint off to get the clean metal. So what we're going to do is set up to do a dual multi thickness measurement. So a couple of things we want to set up ahead of time. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go to the probe and cal menu and we're going to select our probe. In this case, I have a very common probe, an FH2E. It's a dual probe. And if I just go to the probe and cal menu, hit down and this works with the joystick on the older DMS goes or with the the four-way buttons on the DMS go plus if I go to the top of this menu first thing I do is select the probe type next thing I'm going to do is select dual multi measurement mode I'm going to do a one-point calibration and I'm going to do a manual zero <clears throat> so that's a setup I'm going to use in this case for the the uh, through coding measurement. Next step would be calibration. One thing I do want to do before I calibrate, so I'm going to exit from this menu and I'm going to go to the to the config menu, the last menu in the end. And I'm going to come up here and look at my zero block information. Now the zero block is this little reference block that's uh, mounted in the kickstand so we did the way we put it together when you fold the kickstand completely out it's out where you can get to the block uh, to use as part of the calibration now these uh, reference blocks are very precisely made and are measured at the factory and laser engraved with both the velocity of the material and the true thickness of the block and the instrument needs to be told what those values are for the exact block that you have in the kickstand attached to the, the instrument. Um, even if you're used to working in inches, uh, because we had limited space on the rim of the block, they're engraved uh, with the velocity and thickness in metric units, so this menu is always in metric units. So just check the engraving in the block, make sure it matches what's shown in here. Uh, once you've entered into this screen, up and down, selects which parameter you're on, right and left, adjust the value of the parameter. When you're all finished, the done button will take you back out of there. So now that we've confirmed the values on our zero block, we're going to go back to the probe and cal menu and we're going to come down here to calibration, say start to calibration. The instrument says put the probe on the zero block using coupling, stay coupled, all done, take it off. Okay, now it says go to my calibration standard. I have a five step block here and I've told it that I want to set up on the half inch step. It, so it tells me go ahead and couple to the cow block, take it off the block. So if I go back, there's 500, 400, 300, 200, and it's having a little trouble getting the, the uh, thinnest measurement there at 135. So now we did say we wanted this to be a through coating measurement. So far we're only looking at the bare steel of the cow block. However, I have a collection of plastic shims in various thicknesses. This red one is two thousandths thick. So if I look at my 400 step of the block, 400 on bare metal, put my shim on, and I need coupling on both sides to make this work right, but there's 400. So with or without the two thousandths worth of plastic or paint, 400. Um, my blue shim is 5 thou, but again, bare metal, and through, uh, through the plastic, so 300. 
It's about a thousandth of uncertainty there, but that's not unusual. Now, something that can happen as I go to thicker coatings, my brown shim here is ten thousandths thick. As I get these thicker materials, I can start to get some echoes going on in the material that can confuse the automatic gain control of the instrument. So it is starting to pick up a weak echo off the interface between the probe and the top of the plastic, and it latches on to that in the A gate, and the automatic gain control tries to bring that up to a usable level. Now, unfortunately, that's not something interesting to us. That's getting in the way of taking an accurate measurement. So what I'm going to do is come down here and go to the measure menu. And there's two parameters here I'm interested in, max gain mode and the max gain limit. So for most work, especially on bare materials, you're going to want to have the, the max gain mode in automatic, and that's full auto gain control. For especially situations where you have thicker coatings, or if you start seeing A scans that look like this while you're taking your measurements, come in here and change max gain mode to low. So you'll notice the, there's a max gain control right below the, the max gain mode. Here it's 72 dB in low mode, in high mode it's 78 dB. And if you switch to manual, you have direct control over that, that high-end gain limit. So the first thing I usually do is switch to uh, auto low. And you'll notice now with my 10,000 shim, I'm no longer latching on to that initial echo from the, the, uh, the top surface of the paint. And the, the auto gain control is giving me a signal that looks very consistent. There's bare metal. There is through the coating. If I go back to the high mode, you get this kind of thing where you just have a useless, uh, the gain is up so high that you've latched onto that initial echo and you're not getting your back walls anymore. So anytime you start seeing things like that, come in here, adjust the uh, try auto low mode. If that's not getting it for you, you can go to manual, come down to the max gain, and you can control the gain directly until you get your picture back under control. Okay, so that is through coating measurement. Um, it's a very powerful technique. Uh, it can save you a lot of time in the field when you have, uh, say, piping uh, that has protective paint on the outside. It saves you a lot of time in having to uh, grind that paint off, take your measurement, paint it again. So I hope you found this, uh, this video useful. Um, again, I'm Dan Groninger for GE Inspection Technologies, and thank you for joining me.